Before going into the complexities of the nonlinear solution, we are going to see how finite element software build and solve the linear models. Consider a simple bar loaded with an axial force. Let the area of the cross section be A, length of the beam BL, and the elastic modulus be E. Let the axial load be F. We can represent this bar in a finite element model using simple length elements. Consider two length elements created between the three nodes, node 0, node 1, and Node 2, representing the bar. Node 0, is the fixed end of the bar. Node 1, is the intermediate node connecting the two length elements. And Node 2, is the free end of the bar. Let us assume, that the length of the first link element is L1, and, the length of the second link element is L2. The deformed elements under the axial load are shown, by the dotted line in the figure. Let us assume that delta 0, delta 1, and delta 2, are the axial deformations at the nodes 0, node 1, and node 2 respectively. Let F0 1 and F11 be the internal reaction forces generated, in element 1 at the nodes 0 and node 1 respectively. Note here that in F01, the 0 indicates the node number, while 1, indicates the element number. Using the similar notation, we write the internal reaction force generated in element 2 node 1, as, F12. Similarly, the internal reaction force generated in element 2 node 2, is F22. F is the external axial load applied on node 2, and R, is the reaction force generated in the support, at node 0. For element 1, based on the internal forces generated, F01, and, F11 with the deformations. Delta 0 and Delta 1, we can write F01 is equal to K1 times Delta 0 minus Delta 1. In this case, K1 is the axial stiffness of the link. It is given by the formula K1 is equal to the area of cross section A multiplied by the elastic modulus E divided by the length of the link, L1. Note that the term delta 0 minus delta 1 in this equation, represents, the relative deformation in element 1 at node 0, with respect to node 1. Relative deformation in the element, multiplied by the axial stiffness is the reaction force F01. Similarly, F11 is equal to K1 times delta 1 minus delta 0. The two equations representing the internal forces F01 and F11 can be written in the matrix form as F01, F11 is equal to K1 minus K1 minus K1 and K1 times the deformation vector, delta 0 and delta 1. In this equation, F01 and F11, is the force vector, K1, minus K1, minus K1, and K1, is the elemental stiffness matrix, and, delta 0 and delta 1, is the elemental deformation vector. In the similar way, we can write the elemental force deformation equation for element 2 as, F12, F22, is equal to K2, minus K2, minus K2, and K2, times the deformation vector, delta 1 and delta 2.
In the previous slide, we derived the elemental force deformation equations for element 1 and element 2. In this slide, we are going to assemble the two elements to write the global force deformation equation. Consider the same axially loaded bar represented by the two length elements. Based on the force balance, we know that the reaction force R should be equal to the internal reaction force in the nodes E rho, that is F01. The total force F1 at node 1 should be equal to the sum of the reaction forces generated in element 1 and element 2, that is, F1 is equal to F11 plus F12. Similarly, the external force F should be equal to the internal reaction force in node 2, F22. However, in the last slide, we have represented the elemental internal forces F01, F11, F12, and F22 in terms of elemental stiffness and the deformations. We substitute the elemental force matrix equations in the above force balance equations. This gives us the global force deformation equation, R, F1, F, this is the force vector, that is equal to K1, minus K1, 0, minus K1, K1 plus K2, minus K2, 0, minus K2, K2. This is the global stiffness matrix multiplied by delta 0 delta 1 and delta 2 this is the global deformation vector we can simply represent the above equation as the force vector f equal to the global stiffness matrix k multiplied by the global deformation vector delta for the linear stiffness matrix the system is graphically shown in the figure below. We can solve this equation by pre-multiplying both the sides by the inverse of the stiffness matrix K. This gives us the deformations in the structure as delta equal to inverse of matrix K multiplied by the force vector F. Although the real-life linear finite element models are far too complex, the steps shown in this slide, of forming the elemental stiffness equations, assembly to form the global stiffness matrix, and, numerically solving the global force deformation equation, remain the same.